Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Prosper series. My name is Adriana, and I support Cello Community. And so the purpose of this series is to envision, ideate, and create a new world of prosperity for all. And so we've been meeting here weekly, and this is our last series for this month. Um, so I'm really excited um, for those of you that are joining us today, and also for folks that maybe are new to this space. And so with that, um, I welcome you to share where you're calling in from, where you're tuning in from in the chat. And so one of our presenters, Autumn, is here. So if you want to share where you're from, I am here in El Cerrito, California. And Carla from Costa Rica. Autumn is coming in from Santa Monica. Beautiful. And Luis from Brazil. Great. It's always great to have new faces. And so the Prosper series began as an in-person retreat and this is us in Mendocino, California this past November. And so the purpose was to bring developers, designers, dreamers, and doers together to envision what a new world would look like and how money could be beautiful. So we wanted to bring this back in person this spring, but unfortunately, of course, because of COVID, just like all the other events, um, we couldn't do that. And so we brought it online into bite-sized chunks in a weekly series. Um, and so that's what we'll be doing today. And to begin, I um, like to start out with a meditation just to bring everyone into the vibration of prosperity so we can fully receive the content that we'll be connecting with today. So I invite you, if you feel comfortable, to gently close your eyes and begin to tune into the inflow and outflow of breath. Feeling the breath as it comes in through the nose and following it all the way down to the base of the spine. And taking some complete exhales, just letting everything go and feeling the weight of your body on the seat below you. And breathing into this place of contact between your seat and your hips. And just noticing how when you relax the body in this way, in the breath, there's more spaciousness in the body. More space for movement, for imagination. So I invite you to take a deep breath up into your heart. In the words of Charles Eisenstein, the philosopher, how beautiful can life be? we hardly dare imagine it. And so I invite you now to invite how beautiful life can be. Allowing any images, sensations, colors to arrive into your heart space. And just noticing how you're feeling, what you're doing what are the key elements of this beautiful world that we can all create together? I'm taking another breath here to allow that sensation to sink into the body. And after your next breath, gently opening up the eyes and coming back into the room. And so today, one way of potentially creating this beautiful world is through digital social currencies for community empowerment. So I'm super excited today to have Carla and Louise from Cambiatis with us, as well as Autumn from SenseChat, to talk about what community currencies are and how they could potentially be the future to support empowerment. And so with that, I would love to introduce Carla up to the screen. I'm gonna take a moment here. Hey. Welcome, Carla. Hi, Adriana. Nice to so, see you. Yeah, so great to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Excited. Absolutely. Yeah. 
so yeah, I would love to hear um, the work that you're doing with Cambiatis and just all of your expertise with social currencies. I'll be happy to share some ideas. Hopefully they will be interesting and will spark new possibilities for those that beautiful future you were talking about. Indeed. So let me let me share my screen here. Yes, please go ahead. And also folks, if you have questions along the way, we do have an ask a question feature down below. So feel free to ask questions there or in the chat and we will be taking care of that along the way. Perfect. Well, we have someone from Austria. Hello, Victor. <laughs> Welcome, Victor. Um, are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Yes, it looks perfect. So yeah, yeah. take it yeah. away. It's awesome. So we're going to talk about social currencies, bananas and pandas. And Adriana said, that's great, right? Who doesn't love pandas and bananas? Um, I'm Carla Cordova Brenes. I'm from Costa Rica. And I'm also the proud co-founder of Cambiatus. And this is a little bit about me just to, to, to introduce myself. Um, I have a master's in community development and I'm also Singularity University alumni. But I'm passionate about all these ideas of money. And I love how, how uh, Adriana said, beautiful money, new types of money, the connections between money and sustainability and regeneration, how we can foster community development through social currencies is something that I love, how we can create new organizations. Uh, and I'm co-designing all the time social currencies and decentralized autonomous organizations or what we call region DAOs, regenerative organizations. I've also founded Sustainability School, Satisfied Vagabonds, Cambiatus, and I wrote a book called New Money for Sustainability that is available for free in the Sustainability School website if you want to check it out. And I'm funded by Shooter Work Foundation, which is a impact investor that fund um, entrepreneurs working in open source solutions. So let's let's dive in. And I have a question, and this is a question I've, I've asked to, to many people in the past decade. I mean, thousands of people probably. Uh, what is money? And most of the time the responses are, you know, money is something that we use to exchange, something that we use to, I don't know, to put prices on things or to um, represent value. And those are all correct answers if the question was what money does for you. So those are the functions of money. But the question is, what is money? And most of the time people is like, hmm, I haven't think about that. What is, what's the definition? It's not paper coins because that's what money is made out of or digital numbers. What is money? So let's ask uh, the Central Bank of England maybe which is the institution that pretty much model the whole financial system that we have. Let's see what they think. What is the definition they use? So for the Bank of England, money is a type of debt or I owe you. And there are three types of money, cash, bank deposits, and central bank reserves. Money is a type of debt. And that means that if I have money, that means that someone else needs to be indebted, pretty much. And this is the type of money we call fiat money. So the dollars, euros, colones in Costa Rica, reais in Brazil, um, yens, all the money that we know, it's defined as debt and it's called fiat money. Fiat money is a phrase that comes, and I, I don't know if you have heard about this at the beginning of the Bible that it says, um, and let the light be, or something like that. And, and the phrase is fiat lux, which means light out of nothing. So this is money created out of nothing. If you think about it, each time you go to a bank and you ask for a loan, I don't know, for, for, to buy a car or a house, and you're asking for, let's say, uh, a million colones <laughs> in Costa Rica, 20 million colones. Uh, the bank, when you sign, and you agree that you are going to pay back 10%, 20%, 15%, whatever interest, the bank is actually creating those 20 millions in your account at that moment. It's not like transferring from somewhere else. It's like creating the numbers, but they're only creating 20 millions. 
And now you need to go out and find the rest, the, the, the 20, 15, um, 10% to pay back the interest too. Everyone is doing that. People, uh, governments, companies, every time you get into debt, you need to pay back more than the money that the bank is creating. Everyone's rushing to find that money and we need to produce more and we need to extract more resources from, from our planet and keep growing and growing and growing because there's never enough. <laughs> And this illusion of um, eternal growth is created in a world that we know is not unlimited. It has limits, it has, it has boundaries, natural boundaries. So this is fiat money, but this is only one type of money. Defining money like debt is like defining fruit in this, in the, in this manner. Fruit is a type of banana. There are three types of fruits, apple banana, Cavendish banana and cooking banana. And what do you think about that definition? I don't know. I think that where are the apples? Where are the grapes? The papayas here in Latin America or the kiwis? Or... We know there are other fruits. So we know this definition is incomplete or it's just describing one type of fruit, bananas. And who will be super happy with this definition? Of course, the global banana industry there, which is but that's fake, it's not the source of the definition, but they will be super happy if we define fruit as bananas only, if they are the only producers, right? Uh, so that's an incomplete definition too. And in the search of a better definition of money, I stumbled upon with Bernadette Tyre's work. Bernadette Tyre was uh, one of the main creators and architects of the Euro, Euro uh, system in Europe. He was an economist from Belgium, and um, he authored many books on social currencies and complementary currency. He, he was a really great advocate of new types of money. And my husband and I, Ranulfo Paiva Sobrino, which is also my co-founder, partner in crime, we wrote this book. And in this book, we published this definition of money, which is one that we think is more complete. So for us, Money is an agreement made by a community to accept some standardized item, anything, that serves at least as a medium of exchange. And one of the key words here is agreement. As we can have many agreements between us, we can have many types of money also to represent those different agreements. Most of the time when I say that, it, people are like, well, but why do we need other types of money? You know, fiat money is working. We're fine, right? Everyone has money. There's no problem with that. So let's see a quick example of why we need other types of money. You can see here these beautiful panda bears, and they are happy eating bamboo, which is what they eat. Their whole system is super um, efficient and designed by biology to process this bamboo and be super healthy and ready to go in life. But what happened when the bamboo they eat, which is a specific type of bamboo, is not longer available? Well, they are endangered. And that's why pandas have been endangered for many years. They don't have alternatives. If there is not enough bamboo around, they are in trouble. They don't have enough money and they cannot change to another, eh, enough money, enough food. And they cannot change to, to a different type of food because their system is not ready for that. Pandas are highly efficient, but they don't have resilience. They don't have alternatives and options. Uh, and meanwhile, their cousins, the grizzly bear, they can eat, pan and they can eat um, fish, salmon, they can eat roots, fruits, berries, and if you are lying around in the forest, they will definitely eat you too, right? So they have, they are resilient. They have different options to eat. And if there is not enough food, uh, if there is not enough uh, fish, they can eat um, roots. And there is not enough roots, they can eat fruits. They will always survive. They have options. So in terms of financial, in terms of economic, uh, the economic ecosystem, we are more like panda bears now. We are highly dependent on one type of money, fiat money. And we need to become, become a little bit more grizzly bears to, 
in order to be more resilient. And this is something that has been uh, deeply studied, and I, I highly recommend this book, Money and Sustainability, The Missing Link. Also, you can find a paper online called Quantifying Sustainability, in which Bernalietar and other uh, um, researchers actually prove how a system, a flow system, and, and our economy is a flow system, it's a complex flow of things, of money, of value. In a flow system like that, in order for that flow of money to be sustainable, you need to have two characteristics. You need to have resilience and efficiency. And if you see the, the graphic here, in order for, to have the better level of sustainability possible, you need to be, have a little bit more resilience than efficiency. That's a little window there of viability. And right now we are downhill. <laughs> we are like uh, panda bears, highly efficient, and we need to add more resilience to this more resilience and more uh, alternatives to this equation. And the resiliency can come from social currencies, from other types of money different from fiat money. Fiat money, as we know, it has a set of rules and a set of values behind it. And we can create different agreements based on different values to create different social currencies or the technical term is complementary currencies, which means they complement the function of fiat money. You can still use dollars or colones or, or euros and adding resilience to the, your equation by using other currencies too at the same time. So there are more than 4,000 experiences with social currencies worldwide. Um, and this is a number from the literature, but I'm sure there are more, including local currencies uh, that are only used in a specific neighborhood or city or region. Um, mutual credit clearing systems, which I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, in, in a second, uh, time banks, which uses, they use time or minutes or hours instead of dollars to exchange between, between them. And one that many, of, many here are going to be familiar, cryptocurrencies. So each of these type of currencies or type of money that I'm mentioning, each of them are different, have different rules, different values, and different structures. And I'm going to share you one example of a successful case. And this example actually emerged from a situation pretty similar to the cr economic crisis we are right now. And economic crises are everywhere, and we are experiencing more and more crises in every country now. And now we, because of COVID, that's another one um, in the, uh, around the corner. So what happened during a crisis? During a crisis, you have businesses, you have small businesses, and they have their products, their services, um, their expertise. We have workers that they need to work, and there's people ready to buy those products and services. But usually what happens is that there is not enough money circulating for them to do that. So it's crazy. They have everything. The people there, the products, the services, the companies, and the only piece missing is that link, that money something to exchange between them. This happened to uh, 17 small, medium-sized enterprises in Switzerland in the 1930s, right after the Great Depression. They were in this exact position, in this exact problem, dilemma, and they decided to create something to avoid that in the future. So they created the VIR. VIR is a social currency, a complementary currency that only circulates between its members. It has started in 1934 with 17 members, and now it has more than 60,000 members all over Switzerland, including individuals and companies. And how it works, and, and I'm going to just share some of the rules, it has more. One basic rule is that they decided since the beginning that one beer is going to be equal to one Swiss franc, which is their national fiat currency. But they are not going to be interchangeable. It is, no, we are not going to buy this beer with Swiss francs or vice versa. They only use this as a, as a way to make easier for people to put prices on things and exchange. And they decided to create it as a mutual credit clearing system, which means everyone has an account in the system. All the accounts start at zero. And if I'm going to sell this pen to someone, maybe to Adriana, um, and we agree that this pen is going to be 20 beers, then uh, when we exchange the pen, in my account, my, my balance goes 20 positive and Adriana's balance goes 20 negative because she's paying me. 
you know, start at zero, and now I'm in positive and she's in negative. And we can go and exchange with other people with that credit until a certain limit. They can decide, you know, you cannot go, I don't know, below 500 beer or above 500 beer. So you need to compensate your balance and go back to zero again. And at the end, we all can end it up, we can end up at zero, but we all have access to the products and services we needed. And this is a beautiful uh, system, and it has something called the counter-cyclical effect, which means when the Swiss franc is strong before the crisis, the people use, people use more the Swiss franc, the fiat money. But when the crisis hit and there's not enough Swiss franc around, they use more beer. So this complements and balances the economy. So during the whole period, people keep exchanging, keep connecting, and the economic activity doesn't stop, which is the objective of beer. Uh, and this has been highly uh, studied and can recommend this paper too, if you, want, if you want to see the effect on small businesses, for example, which is one of the objectives of beer, promoting uh, the, the health and the prosperity for small businesses. And you can also find this beautiful movie on YouTube called Tomorrow, it's a French movie, which explains many tools and many experiences creating a better this better future that we are talking about and one of the experiences is beer and there are other many examples and this is a, a little example from my country costa rica in which a co local cooperative they they produce sugar uh, they decided to create udis which is uh, units of solidary interchange so these udis which is a piece of paper that they use they used to pay the people that works for the cooperative or to pay the dividends of the members. Part of it, part in colones, which is our fiat money, and part in UDIs. People can, can choose how much they want of each of them, and they can use their colones to pay, you know, taxes or the light or the, the utility bills, and they can use UDIs locally. So this is a local currency that only circulates in their city, in their little town. And the grocery store accepts UDIs, and the, uh, gas, the, the gas station accepts UDIs, and also the co-op accepts, accepts uh, UDIs, so you can exchange back a little bit by colonies if you need that later. So this is a local, local system. And it had a really interesting um, uh, consequence, which was, you know, uh, robbery actually went down because it doesn't make any sense to steal UDIs because you cannot use it in other towns, only there, and people will know. This is an example then, you have e-coins also in Costa Rica, which is a currency designed to, to promote uh, a recycling. So each time you take your plastic and your, uh, um, uh, yeah, your plastic, for example, to the recycling center, you get e-coins. And then you can use those e-coins to have access to other products and services from people that are supporting this system. So the, here, the objective is to promote a healthy and responsible consumption and responsible actions towards the environment. Um, and then you have other examples like Sardex in Italy, which is pretty similar to, to Veer, focused on businesses in different regions of Italy. And then you have time banks. And I'm, I'm just, just to mention this quickly, a time bank was, the first time bank was created by a woman, a Japanese woman that was worried, who is going to take care of my kids if, not, if I am not around? So she created this system in which if you take care of someone, a children and elderly people, you spend an hour taking care of this person, you have an hour in your account. And you can use that hour in the future to, to uh, recognize someone that is spending time with you. And, and an hour is an hour today, an hour tomorrow, an hour, an hour in 15 years, so it doesn't infl inflationate, which is crazy and beautiful to watch. So, those are examples of local currencies, social currencies, complementary currencies, agreements between people, groups of people that use something, a digital paper, digital uh, coin, a paper coin. Some of these systems use a, a little book in which they take notes and take the balances. Um, and they use that as a medium of exchange, a new way of exchange between them. Ultimately, what they are building is bottom-up economic resilience. They are adding elements to this economy that 
previously was only based on fiat, now it has other systems. And you can use URIs and you can use eCoins and Veer and Sardex to have access to these networks and collaborate with these people, which is beautiful. So I have three questions for you, and we are not going to answer those now, but I want you to think about that. What are the values behind fiat money? What are the values behind the dollars? What actions or what um, activities or what feelings this money creates? Why wealth and prosperity are commonly defined by accumulation of fiat money? Fiat money is debt. Why is that considered wealth? And why should we only eat bananas? I mean, we all love bananas, but it's not the only fruit. So why should we only use one type of money if there are so many alternatives that we can also create? Um, so, oh, I think I see that we have more people. We have more people from Brazil. Nice. So this is uh, Social Currencies 101. And what will happen if you would want to if you want to create a social currency, your own social currency for your community, for your group of people? And a spoiler alert, what you can do that on blockchain too. So as I was saying, money is an agreement. And I want to to, to emphasize the second word, community, made by a community. So to create a social currency, to create these economic alternatives, these bottom-up economies, we need people and, and a community of people that has a common goal. That's crucial to start. And when we were studying all these alternatives, social currencies, we we uh, and we by we I I am speaking about my team at Cambiatus. Uh, we identified that there are many challenges. Right? If you are building your own currency uh, with paper or with other centralized systems, uh, maybe you will find issues with security or with uh, scalability. And, um, oh, and Adriana, I just want to ask, how much time do we have? Because I get carried out. I can yeah. keep talking. It's all good. Um, okay. you take it. Yeah, you're good. OK, OK, OK. <laughs> just being me, just in case. So at Cambiatus, what we decided to do is, well, let's create an open source platform. And sorry about the Spanish here, the Spanish. Um, Cambiatus is an open source platform that allows any group of people to create their own social currencies using blockchain technology. And most of the time without even noticing the blockchain technology. And this is a project by Satisfied Vagabonds, which is uh, my company and founded by Share World Foundation. So how you do you start? And, and, and this is something that we, we created or we crafted for the Cambiato, but it works for every community that wants to create their own currency. It's a three-step process. It always starts with the mindset change. So all this idea that I was sharing with you about money, what money is, what money isn't, how social currencies can be created, you need to learn that. And it's up. Your mind, your mind explodes when you start thinking about money in a different way. After that, you need to co-design your own currency. And by co-design, I mean designing together collectively with a community. And then when you have that design it, once you have that design it, then you can think about the technology, right? It's, uh, it's like you need to think of the tech stack. But first, you need to think on the, I don't know, the people stack, right? So what do you need first? So those are the three steps. And I'm going to walk you through the steps with an example from a real community we work with in Costa Rica. And this community is called Pools. In Costa Rica, we have these small mom and pop shops that we call pulperias. Pulperia. And a pulperia, it's a small shop in a neighborhood. This uh, business that is owned by a family, mostly and you can go today and if you don't have enough money they will they will say to you you know you can come back tomorrow and pay me the rest of it it's, it's there is trust there is is this social fabric is being built around these businesses in costa rica there are around ten thousand pulperias in costa rica and this organization called fundes has a network of 
almost 7,000 of these properties. And they have been helping these small businesses for many years in, 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 with um, knowledge and with um, uh, uh, education, learning on how to improve their businesses because most of the time it, they are really basic in terms of how they handle their finance, their, finance, their marketing, right, their business in general. So Fundes has this a lot, the amount of, of knowledge about pulperias. So the first step was, well, you know about pulperias, but you need to understand money first. So we did the mindset change with them, which included a lot of sessions together, talking about social currencies and complementary currencies and money and blockchain too, because that's the technology we are using. And now we have also other tools. For example, we have a simulator when and they can use the simulator to understand how a social currency could work. So that's, that was the first step with them, several meetings and readings and a lot of studying. So they were prepared to start the co-design. And in the co-design, they decided that they wanted to support these small businesses, these pulperias, uh, by giving them access to digital content. And they have their own app for that. It's an e-learning app. So we figured it out that each time a pulpero or pulpera go into the app and finish one piece of content and learn something to improve their business, they will be earning pools, which is a digital currency only for them. So they complete the content, they earn 15 pools, and then they can earn the, they can use those pools to exchange between each other, to exchange products that they can sell on their, on their businesses, to exchange services and other things that can emerge. So it, it's like learning creates this amount of pools and then this creates this a small economy between them. If there are more learning, there will be more pools available. The goal is to learn and to improve their businesses. So that was the co-design and it has more rules. They decided that one pool equals 100 colones, but they are not exchangeable and so on. And then we were ready to take those agreements those rules or those uh, details about the currency that co-design into the software. So people like Doña Fanny, which is a pulperia owner, can use pools on her phone, like in the little time she has in between clients. And this is it has been happening for the last year in Costa Rica. Right now we have more than 500, 600 pulperias in the system, and they have created together almost 200,000 pools, which means more than 9,000 lessons or small bites of content have been completed by these pulperos. So this is something that is, is on, the, on, the, on the go. But are you think, are you say, are you aware, where, um, as you can be aware, most of the process involves developing and designing and thinking and changing your mindset in order to be ready to go into the tech. So uh, we have, a software that is a companion of this uh, process. And this software is called Cambiatus. Uh, there are other tools available to create your own currency. You can use Cyclos, for example, from Straw Foundation. You can use Community Weaver, which is a tool for time banks specifically. You can use the tools from uh, Circular, which is a project in Argentina. They have Moneda Pal. You can use the tools from grassroots economics in Kenya. And each of these tools has different characteristics. Some of them are centralized, some of them use blockchain. And you can analyze the examples and choose. If you choose to use Cambiatus, this is a software that uses blockchain. And blockchain, uh, we use a specific blockchain called EOS.io, or EOS.io is the software that we use. We use functional languages. And that combo of EOSIO and functional languages was, was uh, chosen because it gave us more scalability, the possibility to have many users at once using the tool and an intuitive user experience, which is crucial with this technology. Um, it, it needs to be mobile first all the time. It needs to be easy. Doña Fanny in her pulperia, she is used to WhatsApp and that's pr pretty much what she uses. So this needs to be really, really uh, useful and really easy to use. So this is Cambiatus. And for the more techy, uh, geeky here in the crowd, so this is kind of what is behind behind the scenes. So the public, uh, the, the connection with the outside world is our web app. And we decided to use a web app so anyone can use it on any device, on any, um, in, in, with any software. But we have 
a user interface and we have many tools. We have a wallet, a little shop, profile, so people can send, check their balances, all the practical things, all the practicalities happen here. But we have two layers, which are one more decentralized than the other one. And the decentralized uses EOS IO. And it's when we store all the public data, tokens, balances, transactions. So this crucial information goes there. We also use IPFS to store things like images and other texts and, and other content. And then we have also a centralized layer, which is to store sensitive data, personal information. This is important because uh, you need, we need to comply with uh, personal data legislation worldwide. So this is like the, 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 the general structure of the software. So Carla, we just have a couple more minutes and then we'll yes. um, go over to uh, Luis. Perfect, I'm wrapping up and going uh, to Luis. So with this process, this people stack and this tech stack, you are able to create social currencies for your own economic and cultural context, which is important. You cannot just take the take beer and just plant it in Costa Rica or just take Sartex and plant it in other country because every context, every culture, every community has different characteristics and different needs. And I, I think this phrase from Charles Eisenstein's uh, book, Separate Economic is Beautiful, it says, one of the effects of a homogeneous national or global currency is the homogenization of culture. And we have a diverse world, many people, many communities, many objectives. And we are working with many people in Costa Rica, Brazil, and Spain. And one of these projects is called MUDA. And Luis is going to tell you a little bit more about how Muda used all these ideas, all these concepts and all this tech to build something beautiful and to change their context and to change their objectives and, and, their, and their structures. And um, just to finalize, so what you need, you need to have a group of people and an established network. You need to have a team able to promote this currency and make it work and engage people. And you need to have clear objectives, alignment with your purpose, and be open to use digital tools because in this for industrial revolution, we need to use the tools we have blockchain among them. So I let you with, uh, with Luis and with the case and the example of Muda and how to make these things happen for real. Luis. Aloha everyone. Uh, thanks Carla. It's a, a great pleasure to be here uh collaborating and talking about how to make money beautiful that's such a uh thoughtful way of of talking about it yeah. uh i'm gonna i'm gonna well after your, your brilliant presentation carla i'm gonna just uh share a little bit of uh what we were doing in uh in rio um uh, one second and also, if anyone, again, has questions for Carla, please feel free to put them in the Ask a Question um, section. And we'll be sure to address that. We'll also be holding a Zoom chat after this uh, once we're complete around 9, if you want to meet Carla and Luis or Autumn face-to-face. Um, -face. And so we'll be sharing the link to that once we're complete. Yeah, so well, while I open it up, I think I can start. So basically, um, Muda is a social currency that we created in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, and it was created by uh, a bunch of artists, uh, clowns, hackers, musicians, and people that are trying to build a different world. Uh, those people, it was funny because I met them at a, at a impact investment sort of retreat and they were telling me that they wanted to finance culture and they're trying to do a lot of different stuff and I was like, have you ever tried, have you ever thought about doing a social currency? And they were like, no. And I said, well, maybe we should. Um, and then we started this, this journey uh, that I'm gonna share with you. So the purpose of Muda is to experiment, exper experiment new economies based on happiness and abundance. Uh, we make sure that we have fun along the way. Uh, we think that laughing 
is also a great therapy. So we have uh, something that we call the, the hacking clown. Uh, so we use a lot of, uh, uh, you know, clown uh, and circus uh, methodologies to do what we do. So that's why I think we're, we're that different. Uh, we use a methodology called 4D Fluxonomy, which is a set of tools developed by Lala de Hazelin uh, to create desirable futures. And she comes with a, a four-dimensional approach where we consider uh, cultural, environmental, social, and financial aspects of every resource. And as Carla was saying, uh, to create uh, a community, you know, to build a community for social currencies, the first uh, task, the first job that we have to do is to actually uh, do the mindset change. So because uh, the community at Muda already had this vision from the artist perspective and with the four day fluxonomy, I think, I believe that was key uh, to have the results that we're having because they already had the, they already redefined wealth and redefined value uh, within themselves. So th that made it, made it uh, fertile soil for Muda to flourish. And just, you know, sharing this quote from Bernard Lietaille, uh, we believe that our monetary system should evolve from the monopoly of food currencies to an ecosystem of many currencies, just like Carla was mentioning. And Muda is just one example. Uh, I know there are other uh, entrepreneurs from social currencies. Uh, Florian from Utopia is, is, is here. Uh, and we all we need is to collaborate and make this ecosystem flourish. So Cello, Sense, all, we're all on the same side, which is very cool. Um, so I, I talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit of how Muda works and how we want to promote this uh, other economies. Um, so first, uh, we use the 4D fluxonomy to redefine value and say, okay, so how do you earn Mudas? And you basically earn Mudas uh, with conscious actions. So if you join our website, uh, which is muda.cambiatus.io, you can create your account uh, and uh, claim your mudas if you meditate for 20 minutes, if you plant a tree, uh, if you help elders, or if you volunteer in a, in a social project, or if you do a crowdfunding donation, uh, we refund your donation uh, on a one-to-one -one, one -one, uh, basis. Uh, so that's the way we found to support uh, community projects and uh, the, the collectives that were in our sites. And our context was very uh, unique because Muda started in Rio. And the first action that we did, I'm going to talk it further, was basically a carnival crowdfunding because uh, the politicians like municipality, uh, state, and, and federal, uh, they're not... Uh, you know, we don't have more a lot of money for culture now. So we, we have to find different ways of fundraising. And that's how we, we started from this problem. And what we actually want to do uh, is to reach what, what, I, uh, what we baptize it as exponential philanthropy. So we want to allocate fiat money uh, with a, a yang, like a masculine sort of um, values into social currencies and promote social currency circulation. So we have a, a partner called Sauva, which is a venture philanthropist, and we use uh, our uh, grant from Sauva to foster interactions with Muda. And I'll show the two cases that we have. So first, before the case, uh, we have a few community agreements. So uh, just like uh, Pupis, which Carla mentioned, Muda is a non-convertible to token, so you cannot convert Mudas for reais. But we have an agreement within our community that one Muda is worth one real. Um, and people usually ask, okay, so uh, what's Muda backed by? And we usually say that we are backed by our network values, which is happiness, solidarity, collaboration, trust, confidence, care, and fairness. Um, we have uh, a practice of approving any uh, claim uh, by trust and karma. So let's say 
you know, you did not do a volunteer work or you did one day and you uh, claim it two days, we approve it anyway. Uh, you know, we trust in people and most of the, of the goods and services that people are able to buy with Muda are going to help them become a better person anyway. So we're like, okay, let's just, you know, use the confidence layer and, and see how we solve that later on as network matures. Uh, we know that this could lead to inflation and some problems, but we're also, we, we can have counter uh, tools to do that, like putting, for example, an expiration date on, on the tokens. Uh, the current rules are defined by the network initiators, and we have plans to become a regenerative DAO on the next two years. So basically, rules are defined by initiators uh, together with the philanthropy uh, partner, and we want to decentralize and, and, and you know uh, have community participation, but we want to be ready for it. Um, yeah, so we are uh, at Cambiados. I work both at Muda and Cambiados. Now we, we reached more than 500 accounts in June. Um, so yeah, we're, we're growing uh, organically. We don't do much marketing uh, to acquire users. All our market is to engage our community, uh, to create offers, uh, you know, to, sh to share their gifts and talents with the world. So now I'm going to talk a, a use case uh, about Cordão do Boitatá. I'll try to be very uh, quick because I know Autumn still have to present. Um, so uh, I don't know if any of you know Carnival is the biggest Brazilian celebration of ancestrality. Uh, we wanted to highlight liberty, innovation, and sustainability as uh, plugins to this carnival. Um, we did the first zero waste carnival uh, in Rio. Uh, so we were able to collect 90.8% of the, the waste generated by the Cordão do Boitatá. And uh, we also tested the, the first hypothesis of the crowdfunding refound, where Cordão do Boitatá raised 100,000 reais to you know, make the, the, the party possible, make the, the, the parade possible. And everyone that donated one real uh, or, you know, uh, the amount of reais that they donated, they could uh, claim that uh, as a cashback with for Mudas. So we also incentivized the, the artivism of uh, the artivism actions where people went there, got, um, uh, they got materials and they re re recycled it and became like uh, signs and stuff to help people to be more conscious about uh, the carnival. And we did a free water distribution uh, showing that water is not a product and water is a universal right and people should have right to water. So we, we also did that to, to show how we are conscious about this cause. Um, and, you know, uh, Cordão do Boitatá is one of the, the eldest uh, blocos in Rio and being able to fundraise and not needing uh, corporations or government money to, to do the parade was a huge win. That's the second year that they've done it, that we've done it. And we, we, want, we want to do it stronger next year and, and create like a good example to share uh, for Carnival. And Carnival is a very important, uh, it's a very important cultural fact in Brazil. And we believe that by, you know, incentivizing conscious actions in Carnival, we can actually incentivize a consciousness in Brazilian culture, which is a bit by Bernie, but like Bernie Man in, in the US. So uh, another case is Muda Picadeiro Digital, which means digital circus. Um, our digital circus is an online online program uh, that happens every week that incentivizes cultural production during the quarantine. So we, we actually reach out to artists and say, hey, you know, we're, we're having this online show. Would you like to participate? We have a, a, curate, a curatory uh, team uh, that, you know, selects uh, what artists, what topics, and we double finance the artists. We give them reais, but we also give them mudas, and we purchase uh, organic food baskets 
that can be exchanged for mudas in the platform. Sauva, our philanthropy uh, partner, they purchase uh, 100 uh, organic food baskets every two weeks, and we put that on the platform so people can actually exchange mudas for food, organic food. So, yeah, this is like we, we, we uh, the price is 50 mudas for one organic basket. Uh, this is all made by local farmers from the Rio community, and we're willing to, uh, you know, make this project. Uh, we, we just received the flash grant from Shuttleworth Foundation. Thanks, Carla. Uh, and we're going to further use the resources to, to, you know, do some more positive impact in, in Rio and in Brazil. And we hope to be, you know, uh, reaching out to more communities soon. So I think that was it. Uh, Thanks a lot for your attention and mahalo. Awesome. Thank you so much, Luis. I'm going to um, invite Autumn up here while we look at some questions um, in the chat. And so let's see here. Um, okay, so welcome, Autumn. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. I just want to. Um, oh, go ahead, Luis. Just one more. Just one, one more, one final thing uh, to hand over to Adam. One of the one of our uh, biggest pains at Muda is to be able to communicate within the community, and we created all this, you know, the social currency, the interactions, and all that. But myself, as a community builder, like today, we don't have many options of places where we can be comfortable within our community. And I think uh, Autumn's presentation is going to talk a lot about that, like because and I and I volunteer myself to be a, a pilot community within Sense Chat. So please, Autumn, go ahead. Awesome. And Luis, if you want to check out, there's a few questions um, in the uh, ask a question feature, and you can answer them there. So okay. just you can see. Cool. Thank you, Luis. You could not have teed it up for me any better. So appreciate that, my friend. <laughs> Okay, so I take over the screen. Yeah, you can go ahead and share. And also, um, yeah, if you have any questions, again, put them in the ask a question feature. We've also got a live chat going and um, we can stay connected that way. Perfect. That looks beautiful. So that looks good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you for having me, Adriana. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. My name is Autumn, Autumn Mospeñoloza. I lead strategic partnerships for SenseChat. Um, for those of you, we have a lot of new people here, which I'm excited about. Um, so SenseChat is, we are a venture-backed blockchain technology company um, founded by Crystal Rose Pierce, who some of you may be familiar with. She's um, an amazing prominent figure in, in the blockchain industry and just a huge supporter of, of diversity and women in tech and social impact through technology. So we're excited to be working on this team. And um, so basically I'll just jump in. I know we're short on time. Since chat is, is a crypto enabled messenger app we are launching this summer. Um, and we really designed Sense chat with digital communities in mind. We believe, just like Luis and Carla, that there's tremendous power in communities. And we think that users and their communities that they love deserve you know, a safe, encrypted place um, where they can chat and organize and reward each other for their engagement. So we'll talk about that a little bit. So, so let's just take a quick step back and look at where we are right now with, with messengers in the world. And this was actually new to me when I did this research. Messenger apps are, are now have more users than social networks. It's really the number one reason why we grab our phones. Um, there's you know, 1 billion people using WhatsApp every day. We have um, 1 billion people on Facebook Messenger sending 8 billion messages a day. Um, it's, it's really, the, the numbers are really staggering. And what's interesting is when you look at marketing engagement rates, whether you're a brand or, or a group or whatever, um, the engagement that companies are getting through messengers versus through, you know, news feeds is it's like 10, 10 to 80 times the engagement. So um, the, it's, it's such a more profound way to reach your community. 
So why do we think the messenger apps are the future of digital communities? For the exact reason we just said, it's just the most direct form of communications currently available. It's a way to notify large numbers of people uh, with one message. Um, it's the easiest, most direct way to connect with people that you love or people that you're working with for, to around a certain topic. Um, and there's a problem though, there's something missing, right? So what's missing is that most of the current messaging apps that we're using, they, they were really built for one-to-one -one messaging. They, they were not designed you know, for large scale community engagement. Um, as Luis mentioned a few moments ago, you know, he has trouble with the limiting number of members that he's allowed to add to, to their groups. Um, there's very few to tools to organize and to reward members. Um, and so basically our team decided that digital communities deserve more and uh, they deserve really a better messenger. So that brings us to SenseChat. SenseChat, we are so proud to unveil this this summer. SenseChat is a brand new generation of Messenger designed, yes, for, for users, but also for their communities. Um, for the first time ever, it'll really be a place where community leaders can share with their communities, but also keep tighter control and, um, and reward their members for their engagement. So we'll talk about that in a second here. So your sense chat channel, in your sense chat channel, you can communicate directly with your community. Um, we have designed a, a great suite of tools really based around the pain points of a lot of community managers that we spoke to that, uh, including myself, that, you know, manage communities on places like Telegram or um, Discord. Um, in the sense chat channel, you know, we will have threading so that content can be followed. There is no noise that will interrupt your main piece of content that you as the leader are really desperately trying to get through to your community. And as any of us have been in a Telegram group that just gets one piece of content will get buried within 10 minutes and you find yourself scrolling back up and it's, um, it's a big waste of time and productivity. So, um, so this, is all, this will all be done in a super safe encrypted environment. Um, all of the channels are going to will be uh, independently, you know, moderated, and um, really the the control will be retained by the community managers. So, and so this is what's really the most unique aspect of the new Sense Chat uh, that we're launching this summer is that we will be a crypto enabled messenger. There will be tokens available in your channel using the Sense token. Um, community managers can pump messages from highly engaged um, members. They can reward people for sharing content. Users can pump each other's messages. Um, and what's cool is that all of, the, all of the activity in the channel basically goes towards the earning rate of that channel. So that the more activity in your channel, uh, the more tokens your channel will earn. Um, community managers can decide to either keep that, to inc keep increasing the earning rate of the channel, or distribute those out via some sort of airdrop to the members. So with that, we've been toying around with this idea. We see this concept of crowd marketing, community marketing, our sense chat, we're actually calling it mob marketing. We think this is going to be a much more important kind of channel for, for groups and for brands to grow their networks. And it's just the basic idea that you can really deploy your most passionate community members to execute tasks on your behalf across social, um, allowing you to reach new users and, and grow your communities really exponentially. So one important aspect I want to bring up is that is really core to our ethos and to everything we do at SenseChat, and it's something we've designed this entire app around, is that we believe deeply in user privacy. Uh, we believe that your data is none of our business. We authenticate using phone numbers, which are then hashed and unavailable for even us to see. And each of our communication methods, so if it's one-to-one -one private group or channels, each has its own particular in uh, method of encryption. Um, so, each, so it's just a very deeply secure and private way to communicate. So 
we think that SenseChat is going to be an amazing bridge for existing communities to reach new crypto proficient audiences, to reach um, new crypto um, crypto civilians, as we like to call them as well. We think that uh, most crypto enthusiasts are just super passionate evangelists. And as you have great news to share from your communities or your community currency projects, um, we think that using a platform like SenseChat will enable these really impactful communities just to continue growing in the way that they deserve. And we, we look forward to supporting everyone. So, uh, so look out for Sense Chat. We will be available for download sometime this summer, um, but you can join the early access right now to try and get uh, to bump up your place in line. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so oh, much, Autumn. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so thank you to Autumn and Luis and Carla for all of your experience and your sharing today. This is really a beautiful gift to the community um, for community empowerment. So we are going to be meeting over Zoom um, if you want to meet the speakers and share other uh, share with um, other people that have been on this call and connect. Again, the purpose of this session is not only to bring information to you all, um, but it's also to connect individually. So we're going to do that um, here and over Zoom. So this is the final session of our Prosper series for this month. I'm sure we will continue to have maybe um, ongoing sessions popcorn style as they come up. But I just want to thank everyone for being a part of this community. And you can connect with us, the Cello team, as well as everyone that's part of um, the community at Cello over Discord. So there's a button at the bottom here. Join the Discord channel. Um, and may all beings prosper in connection and unique purpose. And we'll see you over on Zoom. So thanks, everybody. Adriana, thanks, everyone.